For backup purposes, administrators create redundant links. A redundant link is a backup link of the primary link. If the primary link fails, the redundant link prevents the network from going down. The redundant or backup link is helpful only when the primary link fails. Until the primary link is functioning, the backup link should be disabled. If both links are enabled at the same time, it creates a switching loop. Let us take an example. Here, we have two switches. If we connect these switches with a single link, the link will work as a primary link. As long as the switches have only one link, there will be no loop between the switches. However, connecting switches with a single link always has a chance of connectivity loss. If switches work in the core layer, it could bring the entire network down. To avoid this situation, administrators use backup links. However, using more than one link between two switches creates switching loops. A switching loop creates many performance-related issues. Among them, three are the main ones. These are broadcast storms, unstable CAM tables, and network bandwidth. To understand these issues in detail, first, we need to understand how a switch learns MAC addresses and makes forwarding decisions. A switch has many ports. It forwards an incoming frame only from the port connected to the destination device of the frame. We can divide this process into three phases, learning, decision-making, and forwarding. In the learning phase, a switch learns the addresses of all connected devices and saves them into a table known as the CAM table. It uses incoming frames to learn the addresses. Let us understand this process through an example. When a PC wants to send a data stream, it breaks the data stream into small pieces, known as segments. There are two types of addresses, software addresses, and hardware addresses. The device needs to attach both types of addresses to each segment. It first adds software addresses. Software addresses are also known as IP addresses. A segment with IP addresses is known as a packet. After adding the software addresses, the device attaches the hardware addresses. Hardware addresses are also known as MAC addresses. A packet with MAC addresses is known as a frame. A switch understands and uses only hardware addresses to process frames. When it receives a frame, it reads the source MAC address and destination MAC address of the frame. It uses the source address to learn about the connected device. It uses the destination address to make forwarding decision. It saves source addresses in a table known as the CAM table. The CAM table has three fields, MAC address, port, and aging. In the MAC address field, it saves the MAC address the frame has in the source field. In the port field, it saves the port's information on which the switch received the frame. In the aging field, it saves a timer. It assigns a separate timer to each entry of the CAM table. This timer is used to age out old entries from the CAM table, allowing room to store new entries. This feature is known as the aging. Once the CAM table is full, the switch has no place to store any new addresses. Aging resolves this issue by automatically removing the old entries from the CAM table. It keeps the MAC addresses of only those devices that are constantly sending the frames. If any device is not sending the frames, once the timer is expired, it removes the MAC address of that device from the CAM table. In this way, only the devices that are constantly sending frames remain in the CAM table and the devices that are not sending any frames will eventually be removed from the table. When a switch receives a frame, it finds the frame's source address in the CAM table. If it finds an entry for the source address, it resets the timer stored in the aging field. If it does not find an entry, it adds a new entry for the source address. There is one more possible situation. If the switch finds an entry for the source MAC address with the different port information, it assumes that the device has been relocated. Let's understand this process through this example. PC1 sends a frame to PC4. The switch receives it on port 1. Since the table has no entry for PC's MAC address, the switch adds a new entry for it. Now suppose you move PC1 from port 1 to port 6. PC1 sends a frame. The frame reaches the switch on port 6. The switch finds the PC1's MAC address in the table. The table has an entry for PC1's MAC address but with different port number. In this situation, the switch updates the port information along with the timer. If we move PC1 back to port 1, the switch updates the associated port in the CAM table again. This feature makes the relocation of devices completely hassle-free. A switch uses a relatively simple concept to forward a frame. It finds the destination MAC address of the incoming frame in the CAM table. If the CAM table has an entry for the destination MAC address, it forwards the frame from the port mentioned in the entry. If the CAM table does not have an entry for the destination MAC address, it forward the frame from all ports except the port on which it arrived. The process of forwarding a frame from all ports except the port on which it arrived is called frame flooding. 
a switch floods a frame if it has an unknown unicast, multicast, or broadcast address in the destination address field. An unknown unicast address is an address that is not available in the CAM table. A multicast address belongs to a group of devices. A broadcast address belongs to all devices on the local network. Multicast and broadcast are destination-only addresses. These addresses are never used in the source address field of a frame. Since these addresses are never used in the source address field of a frame and a switch uses the frame source field to learn addresses, a switch never learns about these addresses. These addresses always remain unknown to the switch. And as we know, a switch always floods a frame having an unknown address in the destination address field. Because of this, a frame having an unknown unicast, multicast, or broadcast address in the destination address is always flooded by the switch. Now we know how a switch learns MAC addresses and makes forwarding decisions. Let's move back to the switching loop and understand how it occurs. Here, we have two switches. Let us connect them with two links. Now we have a switching loop. Let us see how it works. PC1 generates a broadcast frame. The frame reaches S1 on switch port 1. The S1 switch reads the source and destination addresses of the frame. It adds the source address to the CAM table and uses the destination address to make a forwarding decision. Since it is a broadcast frame and we know a switch always forwards a broadcast frame from all ports, the S1 switch forwards it from all active ports. S2 switch receives it on switch ports 4 and 6. Let us suppose, first, it receives it on port 4. S2 reads the frame source and destination addresses. It adds the source address to the CAM table and forwards the frame from all ports apart from the port on which it arrived. At this time, the switch knows MAC1 is available on port 4. Now it receives the same frame on port 6. It reads the source and destination addresses of the frame. It uses the source address to update the CAM table. As we know, if the switch receives a frame on the same port from the same source, it only updates the timer. But if it receives the frame on a new port, it assumes the device has relocated and attaches the source address with the new port. After updating the CAM table, it forwards the frame from all ports. The switch S1 receives both frames back from S2 in reverse order. On port 4, it receives the frame forwarded by port 6. On port 6, it receives the frame forwarded by port 4. When it receives the frame on port 6, it repeats the same process. It reads the source address to update the CAM table and the destination address to make the forwarding decision. It repeats the same process when it receives the frame on port 4. Similarly, S2 receives its forwarded frames back on ports 4 and 6 in reverse order. It takes the same learning and forwarding steps. It forwards the frames to S1 and S1 forwards them back to it. Switches forward frame blazingly fast. They can forward millions of frames per second. It means this process can be repeated millions of times per second. It creates a broadcast storm. A broadcast storm consumes most of the network bandwidth. A few broadcast storms are enough to bring the entire network down. Since the switch updates the CAM table each time it receives a frame, it also makes the CAM table unstable. Switches use the CAM table to make forwarding decisions. If the CAM table is unstable, the switch fails to make the correct forwarding decisions. All these happen just because of a single broadcast frame. In real life networks, end devices generate many broadcast frames every second. Considering these facts, if a loop exists, the network will not work. However, Ethernet switches are smart enough to automatically detect and remove loops. They use a protocol called Spanning Tree Protocol to deal with loops. The STP protocol creates a virtual topology of the entire network and disables ports that create a loop. If the primary link goes down, it automatically enables the disabled port to maintain the connectivity. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, Please share them in the comment section given below.